Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 40 of Direwolf20's Age of Engineering series. Today, I want to do some more AE stuff, obviously. I uh, came over to check on this thing, and this algorithm assimilator was super full of flawless and weakened diamonds. Um, to the point where I brought a bunch over to my AE system, uh, as you can see, flawless and weakened diamonds. Uh, and, and then decided like to stop the algorithm extractor from extracting anymore because it was silly how much was in there uh other things that i did off camera very quickly recapping some you know work that i did uh set up a blaze spawner so uh yeah yeah uh i needed to do this uh because i've been using blaze rods quite a bit lately uh specifically i needed them for the inscribers that i just made i have four new inscribers uh for my name uh pretty much needed them for the end diamonds uh so remember electric diamonds conductor mass atomic calculator two blaze rods plus a flawless diamond equals the fire diamond needed those to get the inscriber up and running um also made you know all the stuff required to get four more inscribers so now we should be golden as it were uh with inscribers and we can do a little bit of automation around it which is exciting to me because automation is the name of my game. That's what I like to do in Minecraft. And now that we've got an AE system, things are golden. Uh, things that I've noticed uh, as of late, I am occasionally locking up my client. It's happened twice now with uh, browsing the AE system. I suspect it's because I have it connected to the storage doors controller. Uh, so as a test, I've set up two storage buses, one that's set up for insert only, um, and, and he's still got his priority of 10. And then I've got another uh, guy back here, which is set for uh, extract only. So hopefully maybe potentially separating those out will um, give me some relief as it relates to crashing, because crashing is bad. Um, it, it doesn't like completely crash the client, it just locks it up, uh, and I have to like close the game and reload and then it's fine. So something derpy is happening. I think it's related to storage drawers. I don't actually know for sure, uh, but that's my suspicion. One more little thing I did is I cleaned up some of the wiring back here and set this guy um, so that I can uh, toss, for example, some iron into here, because uh, we're gonna need more iron soon, and he should start processing. And uh, these guys will extract this chest or this small storage crate for the time being. Um, oh, and as I was cleaning up that there, that's better. Uh, totally have to like clean up my basement. Like I know it looks awful. It's it's on my it's on my to do list, as it were. It's a to do list that's quite long, but so many things I want to do. So yeah, there we go. See. So for now, that's how that's going to work. Eventually, we'll organize this. So today, I want to get into some auto crafting, if I may. Um, so I, I feel like down here in this room might be a good place to get some auto crafting going. I, I haven't fully fleshed out my idea on how auto crafting is going to work. I could also use my new sub basement that I was going to do uh, the stuff with and I decided not to. But this area down here might be like a really nice place. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm really liking the idea of doing that in the sub basement um to get things organized so let's grab you guys i don't need the filter i need the, that and then you guys go in here and then that should be cool let's uh let's let's expand this area a little bit does that sound like a neat idea um and this will be like a nice big open auto crafting area for for me to, to play with and have fun with um so obviously it intersects a little bit with uh these guys but that's that's not a big deal. I can I can handle and manage that. Nice. Let's make sure it's well lit down here. For the time being, we'll have to just put torches around. But you know, I'm I'm sure we can we can manage some lighting a little bit. I hate torches on the floor. You know I do. But first things first. Let's get auto crafting working. So this might be a nice place um, to get and do some auto crafting. So now let's put away all this junk that I just collected. Um, get these guys out of here. I do have to fix my uh, auto sorting stuff too. All right guys, uh, so next order of business. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, so you get these guys, you get these guys, and you get these guys to do automate these eventually. We'll get there. Uh, check, check, and check. Nice. Um, what I want to do, should I run, I should probably run cabling down there because we're going to want cabling anyway. 
Um, so we've got some emmy glass cabling. We might want a little bit more. Eh, we'll get around to it. We'll see if, if this is enough. Um, so we've got cabling running that way. And this is going to be dire wire for a bit. I'm not even going to lie about the fact that this is going to be some heavy-duty dire wire. But um, keep in mind that I'm at a point where I don't have a large number of resources to spend on fancying things up and, and routing cables. Like, I need to be, you know, as short as possible rather than as nice as possible. Um, but we will get there. And don't forget, I also have to worry about channels. Channels is a thing. Uh, so, so that's, yeah, that's definitely a thing. So do you guys have power then? Because I did that. I presume. You guys might have power, maybe, perhaps, potentially. You say you don't have it, but I think you should. Uh, so this is calculation. So is that this one? Yeah, he's he's totally working. Nice, cool. Now if I broke you, right? Would you still have power? I want to make sure that you're... I think they will share power adjacent with each other. And it does look like they're doing that, so that's cool. Nice. In fact, I'll even break and replace you just to confirm that you have no power. Good. Nice. Okay, cool. So this is the end one. So that's probably not the one I want to connect to because that's the one that I want access to the multiple sides for. So what I'll do is I'll run power into the center of this dude. And that should be cool. Nice. Um, so here's what I want to do. I want to automate this in such a way that um, we can put the appropriate items in this chest and have the appropriate circuits come back. Um, now I very quickly, if you watch my um, Forever Stranded Map with Bob Mark, built something similar to this, uh, like super quickly and showed, like I built it off camera and then showed you guys. So um, this time I want to do it on camera in case, you know, you guys had any trouble following along with how that worked. Uh, so basically uh, we'll want to do this. First, we're going to want to set this guy to extract on green, right? Um, and he's going to basically, pipe into all these guys. So this will be insert on green, but we want to filter what's allowed to go in there, right? Uh, so I've got basic item filters and um, we're gonna filter on this stuff, right? So this is the type of item that's allowed to go in there, right? Correct. And then this one uh, will also be insert on green and he's, I believe the gold one, yep. So he will be filtered on this. And then this guy will be insert on green, filtered on this. Yes? That should be the case. Nice. Okay. Uh, this guy will be insert on green, and his filter will be on silicon, because silicon's what's going to go in this guy. Cool. Um, and then we want to extract these guys on a specific channel. So we will um, insert on green, extract on brown. Insert on green, extract on brown. Insert on green, extract on brown. So the brown is going to go into the top of this inscriber. So you will be insert on brown. Cool. Um, you will be uh, I think I need another filter for this. Let's get another filter real quick. One of these days I'll remember that happens. Cool. Uh, you will be insert on green and we're going to filter redstone's allowed to go in there. So redstone will go in the center slot and then to the bottom we want the silicon to go. So you're gonna extract on blue, always active, and that's going to go into the bottom of this device. And that will be insert on blue. So what we have is, this chest will extract everything. Um, this guy is gonna allow inserting on green one specific type of item, this one will get the other one, this one will get the other one. All three of these will extract on brown, 
which will go into the top of this inscriber, right? Um, silicon will go in here and it'll extract down blue to go into the bottom of the inscriber and then inserting here. Uh, and then finally we want to uh, insert on green, extract on, let's say purple, always active, and you can be an insert on purple extract on green and we'll make you always active so now the finished item will get pulled out of here and placed into the chest you ready so let's see what happens i'm going to place all three of these or all sets of these in here right so these guys are all running he got his silicon he got his redstone watch what happens they're going to stamp these guys are going to go together right because the silicon goes into the bottom of this inscriber um and that's cool nice beautiful right so there's some elegance there, and I'm proud of it because it works really well. Nice. So that's fully automated um, inscriber stuff, right? So basically, um, once we get to the point where we're using applied energistics to do things, we'll just say, hey, anytime you need to make some kind of processor, you put the appropriate items into this chest, and they'll be routed appropriately, and everything will work. Um, so in theory, that should be 100% complete. Um, and, 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 and usable later when we're ready to do more stuff with things. So that's spiffy. Nice. And this guy's going to keep running and making all the silicon he does because silicon stacks in the output, but not on the input. So that'll be fine. Sweet. Love it. Um, so that's good. And we have things working. So that's automation that I love to see. So uh, circuits are automated now. Let's look at two auto crafting automation. Um, so we're going to want... Let's see, applied energistics. We're going to want some things and some stuff. So we're gonna want the molecular assembler. Uh, so for the molecular assembler, we're gonna need some more annihilation cores. So this is where it's going to get useful to have many a circuits. Um, so let's get a few more gold circuits. Um, so that is that. Boom, boom, and boom. So this will be Good to go and at some point i'll automate the carpenter as well obviously uh and that'll be good so now i should be able to just drop this guy in here right and since there's already redstone and silicon in there uh this guy will get stamped to move over to here and we'll get ourselves some logic processors sweet one more little tiny bit of automation we might want to look at doing would be this so up extract on green always active insert on brown North, extract on brown, always active, insert on green. So we put Certus Quartz Crystal in there, and it should automatically turn into charged Certus Quartz. Sweet! Because uh, we're going to obviously need charged Certus Quartz, you know, to make things and stuff. Four is good enough for now. We'll also get some redstone, one, two, three, four. And we'll get some quartz, one, two, three, four. Because uh, I need some of this dust again. Um... And at some point, obviously, I will automate this thing as well. So many things to automate. So little time. But we're getting there. One step at a time with automation. All right, and we want to dust this up, right? Uh, so you grind it up. That should be cool. All right, so uh, we were making molecular assemblers. So we want, you know, this and then a molecular assembler. Cool. So this is the... Um, basically the, the crafting table of Applied Energistics, which is sweet. Uh, and then we're also gonna want some um, interfaces. Right, so we're gonna want a couple of these bad boys, uh, which now needs another set of these, cool. Reasons I made a few things. Um, so that should be good. So I'm thinking like this downstairs area, right? The outer edges of the walls will be machine type stuff. So we could have like smelter and sag mill and whatever machines, right? Go around here. We could have like the carpenters here that we need to do stuff with, right? And then the center of this room will be um, dedicated to the molecular assemblers. And you can have... Um, interfaces on each side and it's been a while since i've really played with these to be 100 percent honest with you guys so bear with me still remembering how things work for the most part um might want to move this as much as it will not be a centered kind of awesomeness situation here um but we might want to what kind of uh you are really in my way. I might want to move this bad boy because he's kind of in a position that's not ideal for me. 
Um, but like, let's let's map this out, right? So we would have multiple interfaces like this, and that actually looks pretty good. Like, coincidentally, I didn't do it on purpose, but it actually fits nicely in the room. Um, and then we could have another set like here. That might be good, right? And we can kind of go from there. So like this room will pretty quickly get filled, but you know, we can, as it gets filled, we can just extend it in certain directions or something, we'll figure something out. But like machines along this wall, machines along this wall, machines along this wall, and then vanilla crafting quote unquote recipes go in the center here. And that looks cool to me. So what if I ran it like this? Right, so here, that should be a good connection. Cool, and you guys should be alive. Hooray, nice. Uh, show or hide terminal in that, blocking mode, ignore the contents of target inventory is good. So this thing is up and running, we can see because it's glowing. So we're ready to start building auto crafting, and that's sweet. Uh, let's reconnect this cable here then because we don't actually need him anymore uh to run up top i found a better way to run that cable and better i have an extreme air quotes i know dire wire i know i know but like i said resources uh are a thing that i have to worry about so that's cool so let's put this away i will note that i haven't crashed since i changed that configuration over there so i'm hoping that helped um, sweet. So now we're going to need uh, a couple more terminals. Uh, so we're going to want, the, we have the crafting terminal, we want an interface terminal, and we want a pattern terminal. Those are the two things that we're going to need. So a pattern terminal needs a crafting terminal, which needs an ME terminal, um, which is cool. So let's get two ME terminals, right? So we're going to want one, two. Ah, we're going to need more of those gold dudes. Where's the gold one? Here. You, you, and you. Cool. So much to do to get this up and running, but once it's done, it's going to be amazing. We're slowly but surely getting automation, right? Like... This is already easier than it was two episodes ago. And that's cool. So four more of you dudes. Four more of you dudes. And eventually we'll have like an ME interface hooked up to this chest and to the to the forestry carpenters so that we can get, you know, more and more things. Ooh, yes, you're cool. You're good. You're doing your thing. Nice. I do love automation so much. Remember how painful it was when we just had one inscriber? That was like two episodes ago. Sweet. Fourth. Okay, so we want two of these, right? Uh, so we're going to want Uh, the interface terminal and the pattern terminal. So the pattern terminal needs one of these dudes. So the pattern terminal needs crafting and the interface terminal. Oh, the interface terminal doesn't need an enemy terminal. Oh, well, we'll use the grab. We'll, we'll be fine. Um, pattern crafting terminal. Cool. We just need a crafting table. We just need wood. Right, so ME crafting terminal needs one of you dudes. And then we've got our interface and our pattern terminal. So pattern terminal, good to go. And then the interface terminal is what we also want to have. So I'll need an ME interface. And then the interface terminal just needs a gold. So I need another one of these illuminated panels. You can go away for the time being. Um, and then we just need a 
for the interface terminal. We just need a, a diamond dude. Actually. So the diamond one is the blue guys, so. Sweet. Wish there was a way to speed up these machines a little bit. I don't think that there is. But it's okay. So then you get stamped. These I can speed up with acceleration upgrades, which we'll probably look at doing later when we want to get more and more stuff. And this thing filled up with charge service course, which is what I expected it to do. Cool. So what I'm going to do is stick my... Um, uh, pattern terminal and interface terminal, right? So let's put the pattern terminal up top. So we'll get some cabling. We'll put the pattern terminal here and I'll put the interface terminal here. That'll look good. And then uh, we still have conduit facades. Nice. Looking good, right? Loving it. Gotta say, really like having this... Uh, this, this void miner thing taking care of Sirtis for me. Uh, I was gonna drop these guys in here, but I might as well just throw this in here and get lots and lots of dust. Because this produces both dust and crystals, which is sweet. Give me a little dust, please. The dust is not 100%. It's a low percentage chance to get the dust, but still, it makes it. See, there it goes, we just made some. Um, so next thing we need to make is patterns. Uh, in order to get that, we're going to need a little bit more quartz glass, because I'm out of that. And we're going to need more glass. Sweet. Uh, patterns are made like this, so it's just glowstone iron. It's not that expensive of a recipe. Um, so let's get a bunch of them. Ten sounds like a good starting point. Uh, and we're going to put those into our pattern uh, terminal. And let's say that we want to learn how to make new patterns, which is pretty easy to do. Uh, so we're going to need a little bit more of this quartz glass stuff. Come on, Busta. Give me some more dust. It's unfortunately not a huge amount of dust that you get, but that's okay. Um, so let's teach it first how to make uh, quartz glass, because it doesn't know how to make that yet. Right, so now it does. Uh, and then the next thing we want to teach it how to do is make blank patterns. And we want to make sure, um, by the way, when we do this, we can craft out of this window, I think. You, I lied, you used to be able to. Maybe you can't anymore. So let's make sure that we've got our quartz glass. This is one of the few things that I really dislike about applied energistics and really like about refined storage, is that you can teach patterns for things if you don't already have the items for them with refined storage. You can't do that with applied energistics. And that was an on-purpose design decision. Uh, also, you can do or dictionary substitutions. So with this, we can say like yes or no for or dictionary. I'm gonna say no for now because I don't want it to use regular certus. I want for now for it to require pure certus, um, which is good, right? So now I should be able to do that and I can access my interface from here. So like molecular assembler, which by the way, I can go down here and rename if I want, I think. Priority, blocking mode, interface. I thought I could. You know what, it points to the molecular assembler, so I th think there's a way to name them. I just forget what it is. But it's telling you what it's pointing at, so molecular assembler, right? So if I put these guys into the molecular assembler, it's the same as going down here and putting them in here, right? So now what I should be able to do is test requesting blank patterns. So if I want three of these, it'll tell me we're missing, oh wow, we're really missing glowstone dust? Did we get low on that already? And 10 Sirtis dust. Um, so let's get these guys, we're gonna fill you up. And let's just ask for one pattern or two. Available one, really? I'm like super low on glowstone? I must be. Oh well, guess where we're going. Haha! -ha. So like a nifty way to get glowstone? Like like a little bit more fun? Um, bees produce it, grinder, scrap boxes, macerating, uh, that, that, grinder, squeezer, crushed blocks. Pretty much glowstone gets you glowstone. Um, which is drop it, actually additions manual, and you, and you.
and you and sag milling and okay so now there we go all right that's enough for now uh so you guys go away so now if i request some blank patterns like three missing one two please no crafting cpus that's right i forgot any crafting cpus I forgot all about those. Uh, crafting, storage. So these are multi-blocks that we need to set up. Um, crafting unit is that. And then we want to do 1K crafting, which requires a crafting unit, or 4K crafting. So each crafting thing requires a certain amount of processing power. And you can see it like right somewhere, 104 bytes, right? So to make two of these would be 104 bytes. If I wanted to make one of them, it would be 93 bytes, right? So, um, and that's where your crafting CPUs come in, right? Like 1K can do up to a thousand bytes of craft, but like once you get to like multiple crafting steps, it gets more complex. So we can start with like a 4K maybe, uh, which requires a lot of circuits. So let me, um, let me go make a bunch of circuits and we're right back. So crafting unit plus 4K crafting storage. Now this thing should be the brains that are needed to get this guy crafting. Um, and we can really kind of maybe put him in the ceiling. Does that sound cool? And th this can be a multi-block, by the way. But that should be enough just to get us working. And then we can multi-block him up later and fancy him up. So now if I ask for a pattern, uh, just give me one, please. Start. Boom! We've got auto crafting. And that is a beautiful thing. Um, Maybe one more set. I'd love to auto craft these guys. I wonder if blocking mode would we would work on a carpenter. That I'm not sure about. Um, but hopefully. Uh, my question is, do I want to move them downstairs? Because it would require all that downstairs too. Right. Um, so that would easily be moved downstairs. I just need to run some more conduiting and stuff. Um, but that shouldn't be too bad. Um, pretty sure you won't retain your thing there, but I can rebuild that. Uh, I, I kind of would like to automate this bit. And I'd also like to set up um, the ability to pull out of these drawers. That would be cool too. So let me come back in a sec. All right, just rerunning a little bit of cabling and conduiting. Um, I guess you could run this way. That would be cool. So in theory, yeah, no dire wire. Working on it, working on it. I'm not right now, but I will work on it eventually. But you guys should get power now. Good, uh, reprogramming, be right back. Okay, so that should have me all programmed for these guys. Let's do something a little bit extra tricky to save both on channels and on resources at the moment. I'm gonna do this with item conduits a little bit. Uh, and we're gonna do something like this. So what we'll do is we'll have an ME storage bus or an ME interface here. This is what's gonna hold the three patterns we're gonna have. Um, and basically I'm gonna tell it to put the circuits in the chest uh, as well as the diamond gold or pure certus. But I won't worry about um, the redstone ingots. We'll do something to keep a stack of redstone ingots in these carpenters at all times. We'll find a way to do that. Um, for now, let's do this. So what I'm gonna do is run this down to here. You will be extract on uh, green, always active. You guys will be insert on green, extract on brown, insert on green, extract on brown, and insert green, extract brown, and then you will be insert on brown. So basically it'll pull out of the chest, it'll put the stuff in here, uh, then we need three filters. So we're going to want a couple of you guys. I think I had an extra hopper in there. Yes, I did. Nice. Uh, cool. And then we'll filter what's allowed to go into these inventories. So you on the insert um, are gold and the, and, the, and the brown guys, or the gray guys, these, 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 and gold. Cool. Um, you are the blue and diamonds, so insert filter is you, 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 and diamonds. And that makes you 
the these guys. Cool. Nice. Uh, so then we go create a pattern. So we're going to want three patterns. Um, and again, you can't really... So we want to change this to processing, right? I don't think... I can shift click in here. Another thing that I love being able to do in refined storage that you can't do in here, which is a bummer. Um, but basically we say u plus u plus u plus two of u. Right? U, 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 and one, two should oh wrong, wait wrong ones derp um you 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 wait before we do that let's correct that pattern right so you you and you so these three and two pure certus quartz crystals assuming that we keep redstone and get stocked right get extracted, and that's going to make me a refined circuit board, which will hopefully get pulled out and dropped into the ME interface, uh, which once I connect you here, should wind up dropping stuff into the AE system. Nice. So if I come over here and say circuit board and put that there, we've now got a pattern that will say going here, and that is when you put two pure certus quartz and the three specific circuits we specified, you get back a refined circuit board. Cool. And then we make another pattern that is you, you, and you with two diamonds goes in here. So two diamonds and these three should start this processing and that'll get me the basic circuit board. Cool. And I'm gonna hang on to these for a sec, no not you, you. And then finally, this, this, and this, and two gold. Two gold and these three. Should get me this circuit board, nice. So now I drop these guys into here, and that saved us on, you know, having a channel dedicated to each forestry machine. The only thing that is a side effect is we have to put redstone ingots in here manually. Uh, the reason I didn't add redstone ingots to this is because all three of these add those redstone ingots, so it wouldn't know where to put them intelligently. Like if I requested this circuit board and it put the redstone into this carpenter and the other items in here, then it wouldn't work. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's cool. So now the only other thing I need to do. Um, is hook up this storage drawer controller um, to the system with a drawer or a, a, a storage bus. Storage bus. So we're going to need one of you. Yeah, I don't think we have everything we need here. Let's go ahead and get you guys cooking. Do, 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 do. That'll get me that guy. The other two I'll come back for in a minute. So storage bus. So we're going to want one of you. Two pistons. One sticky piston storage bus and then we need more cables because we're out of cables for sure um so let's get really is that the best we can do hopefully a dozen cables is enough so for now i'm going to set this emmy storage bus to be um extract only so it can only pull items out and let's see how smart or efficient we can be about connecting to existing cabling.
Doesn't look too bad. Nice. So now I should have access to my circuits. Cool. Um, and if I wanted to request four of these and hit start, what we should see is you running at this point. Yay! Everybody's a winner. How cool is that? Now what I might want to do, because this carpenter could conceivably fill up with like one type of circuit, because he doesn't have a lot of buffering space, um, is maybe configure this guy for blocking mode. Do not push crafting items if inventory contains items. Um, so that'll make sure that this inventory is empty before it pushes new items in there. And that should prevent overflow. So what we should see if I um, requested more circuits. So if I said four more, So see it it it's well it kind of worked. I think it was too fast because like that inventory emptied out and then it pushed another set. But if we had requested a large number like ten, I think it might be okay. You think I can request ten? I don't know if I have enough, but we'll we'll find out. That's pretty awesome though. What if I requested ten? Missing gold. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Uh, what if I requested? Ten of you. Would that be a problem? Missing pure certus. Um, cause uh, uh, here's some. I want to make sure that this thing doesn't overflow with circuits. Right. So what should be happening is it's not inserting the next batch of items until this inventory is completely cleared out. See how that's happening? It's waiting for that inventory to clear out those last two circuits before it pushes another set in. And that's what we want to see. And that'll prevent like all of one type of circuit from getting pushed in here in case we like overflow it with items. So this is a functional and awesome system. Uh, next step will probably be to get this part hooked up, but we'll get there. Uh, but you know what it is now, guys? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it is. It's wrapping up point. So Dial 20 is sending off. Hope you guys enjoyed the automation systems that we built today. Um, I need to go mining. Uh, and I probably need to set up some other important stuff. Like um, handling sorting. So what I'll probably do is in here, I'll set up an export bus for these types of items. And then I will set up an either an import bus or an ME interface right here. For now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. You know what to do. Take it easy.